this morning. I want to go right into the Word and talk about this morning. You shall know the truth, and the truth you know shall make you free. It's only that truth that you know will make you free. If you don't know about Jesus, Jesus can't save you. Not in here with me. He's already died for all of the sins of the world. But if you don't know about it, it's only the truth that you know can make you free. When Jesus was born, the whole nation of Israel was looking for the Messiah. They were looking for the Christ. Always remember, Christ is not Jesus' last name, it's his title. He is the Messiah. Christ means the Messiah, the Savior. Amen. And he was coming to save his people Amen. from their sin. Amen. Many of the Jews began to believe that he was coming to deliver them from the Roman government. Right. They had changed the belief of Messiah into some earthly king that would come fight and deliver his people. But Jesus made it plain, even standing before Pilate, that my kingdom is not of this world, therefore I will not fight. But the, the word let, lets us know, and I'm, I'm going to give you the scripture for it, that John the Baptist, when he came on the scene, that John was from his mother's womb, filled with the Holy Ghost. And he had a particular job to do. And once John's job was completed, his anointing for his assignment decreased. Y'all stand here with me. When John said, I must decrease and he must increase, he wasn't talking about popularity. Too many people follow Christ because they are following uh, popular uh, people or uh, celebrities in the body of Christ. They, and when, when the song get old, and I've heard that song before, and they don't want to hear that song, they, they try to find another artist that they can go to their concert. And, 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 and then they hear this message, they hear that song, I want to hear uh, uh, some catchy phrase, you know, uh, who let the dogs out, you know. <laughs> and we get into this celebrity thing, and we want the, the word of God to be performed. And when, when individuals begin to perform the word of God, I promise you, God will not put his anointing on you. It is the anointing that will remove your burdens and destroy your yoke. It's not a catchy phrase and a, a, a tune and a sound. So, so John, when he came, the Bible said he did no miracles, not even one miracle. But the Bible said all of Judea and Samaria and all the roundabout region came unto this man who was not dressed in fine clothes, but he had on camel's hair and a leather girl. Right. And he was eating grasshoppers and wild honey. Right. He looked wild and he acted crazy because they said he has a devil. Y'all know about it? Yeah. Jesus said, he said, you said, you all have said that John had a devil. He said, but I came eating and drinking. Because they said, John didn't eat or drink because he was eating crazy food. <laughs> but Jesus enjoyed fine food and was drinking wine, and he said, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bill. Well, I don't care if you're eating grasshoppers or if you're eating steak. People still want to talk about you. So you might as well go ahead and enjoy whatever it is you love. If you like bologna and crackers, get your five-gallon bucket, turn it over, and sit on that bucket, eat your bologna and crackers. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, mm -hmm. if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. You all listen to me. If you do not continue in the word of God, you are not his disciple. Right. He just believed the law down. He said, if you believe to those Jews that believe on him, you have to continue in my word. You can't do God's word on Sunday and do the devil's business on Monday. So he said, you must continue in my word, then you are my disciple 
indeed, you are really my disciple. Because some of them are part-time love. But the Bible says in the 37th verse, what? And ye shall know the truth, mm -hmm. and the truth shall make you free. Again, truth is exact. True. Accurate. Information. It's accurate. Somebody say accurate. accurate. Truth cannot be added to. And truth cannot be taken away from. That's why the judge requires you to tell the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. You can't tell truth than the way you saw the truth. You, you can't tell the truth and then elaborate on the circumstances around the actual fact. Y'all stand here with me. So Jesus said, you are no truth. Truth has a ring to it. I don't care what anybody says. Things sound off, but somebody telling you something, that's all y'all help me with it. I don't care if, if somebody's flim flamming you, you can pick up on it. Because truth has a ring to it. And when somebody's exaggerating, and when somebody's flattering, you know, before they say your name, they give about five adjectives. You know you're none of that. They just told you. I how smooth your skin is. Smooth as a Georgia peach. It's creamy smooth. You know your dog for you. And sometimes because it sounds good, we just we just want to hear it. And we know the red flag is waving. And somebody oh, tell me like your coffee said, don't do it. So Jesus said, you know the truth. And the truth that you know. Somebody said they'll make you free. Because truth has a ring to it. All right, John 8 and 34 says what? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. If you are practicing sin, committed sin, you get up in the morning doing that same sin. Round about noonday, you do it again. Before you go to bed, you do it. You commit it. You practice in the sin. He said, you're serving that. The Bible said you can't serve two masters. You can't serve the devil and serve God. You cannot serve sin and be in righteousness. Okay, I'm just give a few right I counted them. There's about five of them. But he says, verily, I verily, very, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed, practices, continuously, in a repetitious manner, routinely, at the drop of the hat in life. He said, you're a servant of sin. 35th said, And the servant abided not in the house for So let me just explain that, because if you are a servant in a man's house, okay. servants get fired all the time. Yeah. Servants get laid off all the time. Yeah. But what does he say about the son? But the son abided ever. But if you're a son, uh -huh. you can act a fool and still be the son. Uh -huh. You can go up in a hall pen and still be the son. Uh -huh. But you can't stay up in a hall pen and have the benefits of the son. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When you're in that hall pen, you need to come to yourself and say, I'm not this. Yeah, yeah. I have all of this stench on me. Back at my father's house. Uh -huh. He had plenty of food to yeah, eat. Yeah. Even the servant, somebody said the servant. When the servants are doing better than you, some of the sinners are doing better than God's people. Y'all not in, you know why? The Bible said those that don't know and do, God said, I'm going to beat them with a few strikes. He said, but you didn't know better and you continue to do stuff, I'm going to beat you with many strikes. And you know you told my mama I don't do better. Rape up. 
for selling drugs than to keep being free, buying business, got gold chains, riding around all day bouncing, and die and go to hell. I'd rather go to the prison and be, begin to think about my life. See, y'all didn't miss y'all this day. Y'all stop getting these folk, y'all relatives out of jail. You need to leave them in there so they can come to their state. You get them out too quick. Let the ink have dried on their fingerprint. You get quiet in here. I just told you the truth. You know the truth, but that truth you know don't make you free. You spend too much money on fines for other folk. All right, here I go. Read what he said. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, mm -hmm. but ye seek to kill me. Come on. Because my word had no place in you. What Jesus had just said, he told those Jews, you are flesh and blood of Abraham. You're Abraham's seed. You were born into Abraham's family. I'm going to tell y'all something here in just a minute. My children, I'm going to use them for a minute. Come here, I'm going to rather use them for a minute. This is me and my wife, oh, this boy, y'all give him a hand. Who's the next one, Mike? Come here, Mike. Kim's not here. That's the baby boy. That was a time. I can go. Tell somebody ain't gonna work now. These boys are hard as rock. Look at that chair. <laughs> but when you train up a child in the way they should go, you don't have to put no hand on that child. Because I've already done all the rocks I'm doing. This boy right here licked his tongue at me one time. Didn't do it anymore. <laughs> I gave this boy one lick, one time, and he still bring it up to me. <laughs> oh, but look how they turn out. Yeah. I would take 10 million or a million dollars. Y'all ain't got to hear what I say. It's, no, it's nothing on this earth that I take for them. But as precious as they are to me, y'all go sit down. As precious as they are. So Jesus just told those, those uh, uh, Jews something. He said, you are of Abraham's seed. You proceeded out of his bloodline. But let me tell you something that's greater than somebody born in somebody's bloodline. And that is an adopted person. Right. See, y'all don't have to think about that for me. An adopted person. How many know we adopted into the body of Christ? God fixed it that way we could be adopted. Because when Andre was born, the doctor told my wife, my wife been had children for about seven or eight years. And the doctor said, well, I can do some things. Maybe we can correct. I, I feel something. We can correct some stuff. I said, let's pray. And we prayed for three months. But we have to do something else.